Okay, my name is John Chastain, and I'm a professor and extension agricultural engineer at Clemson University in South Carolina. And uh, today's uh, talk is going to really, really get to some of our nutrient management issues, and I'm going to focus mainly on the ammonia loss issue, but it's also going to impact, uh, I'll do some examples of how it impacts other things in nutrient management calculations. We've, we've covered this a couple of times, so I'll hit it very briefly. You know, we think about ammonia loss. I'm going to look at falling application of manure, not in, from the house. We've got that as well. But uh, there's two things that are going on. Number one, it's a loss to the farmer. It's a nitrogen loss. That's, that's an economic loss. That's an agronomic loss. And it's also a source of pollution. So it's one of these things. Is, there's kind of a carrot and a stick. You know, we've got a carrot reason we want to control this. We want to get more benefit from manure. And there's also a stick piece. We want to make sure we're not polluting. We're reducing our impact on the environment and we're also re reducing our uh, regulatory exposure. And, you know, and it's not just with ag, it's also with, you know, municipal waste treatment, industrial applications of sludges, things like that. And it is a big concern of, I know the regulators in our state and also across the country. So let's start, I'm gonna focus on swine manure. And just as a caveat, everything I'm talking about, well, the numbers really only apply to swine manure. If we st in fact, only the ones I've selected, as we'll see as we go along, the solids content makes a difference. The species also makes a difference. Poultry and dairy are definitely different. So we're just gonna focus on these. I'm gonna focus on two examples. A lagoon water from South Carolina, we're looking at half percent total solid. There's a lot of both biological and physical treatment has happened to this. And I've got predominantly anatomical nitrogen. We call it, we use the abbreviation TAN. That's the ammonium N plus the ammonia piece together. And then, uh, and we've got organic in there. We've got two pounds per uh, thousand gallons in this sample. And we can look at the ratios, about 68% tan. Okay. So not a lot of, you know, definitely tan dominated. And then I switch over to a slurry and I pick seven and a half percent solids. That's nothing special, except that's kind of in the middle of some of the pit manures. That could be six, that could be eight. So I pick seven just for the example. And uh, we're looking at 23 pounds per thousand gallons on the tan and 19 pounds per thousand gallons on the organic in this particular case. Now, I didn't measure nitrate in this case for the simple reason that both of these situations are in anaerobic conditions. And kind of just as a side note, the way it works for permitting in our state is by law, first of all, all producers are permitted. 30,000 pounds average or say 30 annual units and above, you have a full permit. So there's no one who doesn't have a permit. They're all required to do manure sampling every year for everything that they put out. And by law, they must have ammonium in and organic in, as well as phosphorus, potash, and some of the other miners. And then we only have a nitrate measurement requirement if we add air or have a reason to. So if I put an aerator on this lagoon, I would have to measure nitrate. If I do composting, I have to measure nitrate. So that's why I'm not showing nitrate on this slide. This tan thing, you know, a lot of producers, are, we never say tan to our producers. We don't talk dirty to them like that. We, we call it ammonium in. And when they get an analysis back from the lab, uh, it says ammonium in. But we said, you know, there's always the ammonia pieces included. And so then the next question is, how much of this tan thing is ammonia in that could be lost? And this is a chart I've used, and there's the, the black dots, the solid line, the solid black dots is the one I'm referring to. We're looking at something that's highly pH dependent. So at pH six and a half, there's no ammonia. In fact, like this alum treatment of litter, our goal is to get to seven. And we've got some layer litters that are 656 coming out of the house. And then, but most of our lagoon waters, most are around the seven, eight range, slurries around that similar kind of range. So I kind of put that orange circle there and it'll actually be from like 0. 0.6 to 10 or so. So we're just gonna use 10 as a 10% as a typical value. I'm actually kind of assuming on the high side, if you will. What we're thinking about when we estimate plant available nitrogen, that's the new little abbreviation here, PAN. We can call it available nitrogen, but we like to emphasize plant available nitrogen. It's basically how much of the organic in can I count the first year? How much of the ammonium in can I count? And if I measure nitrate, I count it all. Because that first thing is a little M sub F, we call that a mineralization factor. 
And that's what gives us the estimate of how much we are estimating will mineralize out that first growing season. Now in the South, we don't worry about carryover organic in for the simple reason, our warm climate, it, it, it gets burned up. We really can't rely on it. As you go farther north in the country, you'll see some people carrying over five, 10%. We really can't rely on it. But this is where we would start there if we were thinking about rollover nitrogen. Now for this mineralization factor, um, in fact, in the, some of the papers and references I have with our little proceedings uh, document, you can go there and you can find this table and you can also find the original references. But uh, I'm keying in on swine manure, um, basically the slurry bed out, mineralization factor of 0.5. Lagoon water 0.7. You can see the range there, but you know, you can also see it varies by species and for compost. It's quite small, but I'm going to zero in on the orange numbers for this, for this example. The next big thing in this equation is this ammonium in availability factor. And that's really the most of the gist of what I'm fooling with in this little model. And actually what I'm calling a model that's just a quick way of saying it's a quantitative lit review. So there's correlations, there's factors, you can put them together. Basically, we're trying to calcul make calculations that follow the mean response in the data we have. So, that, the, so that's what the model is. And for the stuff I'm doing this in this example, I've got a table on the paper that has all the, uh, kind of averaged it down. Here's my recommended AF values for swine. I'm just going to use two. So the idea was, if I'm, in, if I'm out in the field talking with a producer, and he says, here's, here's my manure sheet, uh, you know, what should I do? I want to be able to have just a number I pick, pop in my calculator and say, okay, here, I'll sit down at the kitchen table, let's work it out. You know, so that's really what I put in the proceedings is just that table I would use. I'm going to grab some numbers from that. Now, the availability factor, basically, I, well, to keep things clear, I talk about ammonia loss and percent of tan applied. So the availability factor is just one minus that in decimal form, you know, AL divided by 100. So to give you an example, right now from Clemson Extension, what we always use, regardless of manure type, if I, and whatever it is, if I broadcast manure, I assume 50% of the ammonia men's lost the air, and that means I have an AF of 0.5. How do we come up 50%? Well, you look at a lot of the old literature, it says, well, ammonia loss can be from zero to 100. So, okay, 50% done. Okay. Actually, some states say 80% on certain things. Uh -uh, it's not true. You know. the, the other number we use is say, okay, if you incorporate with the same day, we're going to assume you lose 20%, you get to keep 80. So, 0.8. And oh, by the way, irrigation of swine lagoon water, 0.5. We'll go out and put it out agronomics rates, even for phosphorus we're always more than a quarter of an inch irrigation depth. And if you look all over our literature, even with fertilizer, that counts as incorporation. So when we irrigate lagoon water, we count as incorporation because we don't have application depths less than a quarter. They're typically a third to 0.75, depending on nutrient content. And they're done at agronomic rates. So that's all we have. And then we use a mineralization factor of 0.6 for everything, which if you kind of look at that table, that's not that great either. So what do we do for ammonia loss estimates? Um, the data from the literature we used to develop correlations for broadcast ammonia loss. And most of these were on cut hay or ryegrass. We looked for some, we had some of the liquids where we had some bare ground stuff. It's just a scant little data. So, okay, you lose a little less on bare ground. So we pretty much said, we'll go with the max, which is basically saying I'm putting on cut rye or, or, or hay type situation. Um, so it's, that's always the maximum rate. And I'm just going to look at these two examples I mentioned, swine lagoon water and swine slurry as we go through these examples. And broadcast means just that, you know, throw it on the, on the ground. Here I'm showing no-till. Uh, the bottom one, if you see the big gun, basically irrigation is broadcast is where I'm counting it. Um, it does incorporate if it's lagoon water, if it's a slurry, it's just straight old broadcast. And so here in this basin where I have an incorporation requirement, I put swine slurry through that big gun, I need to be incorporating that within a day to meet, meet re requirements and also to help deal with one all. And it, I'm lucky I got that picture on grass because we do a lot of broadcast application. Why? Because we're putting it on hay, ground, and pastures where I don't go and disc afterwards. So it's still an important aspect of what we're doing. 
So here's some data that from my uh, student of mine, Felipe. Um, and this is all, in fact, when we, the reason we did this is we actually had a, other studies going. We had two lagoons outfitted and we were using them to actually fertilize pine trees. <laughs> okay. One newly grown in the grass field and other ones, you know, commercial pine plantation. And we were looking at the literature on this and we found very little information where somebody had built a, a good wind tunnel and gone out there and measured what's the mass flux of ammonia leaving following irrigation of any lagoon water, swine or dairy. So this is about the only data I have. So this is from Felipe's thesis. And uh, basically we're, we're looking at 0.4 to 3.6% ammonia loss of the tan applied. We are assuming 20. You kind of see this is where this is going. Why does it loss? Well, the same reason all my agronomists say, okay, you put out a fertilizer, you, you irrigate a half inch, you've incorporated. We see the same effect. In fact, this is all on residues and grass. This isn't even on bare ground. Bare ground would be a little better. So again, we'll take the worst. So it's still small. Why? All that ammonium is going into the soil with the water. Here we've combined a lot of data, the data we could get on everything that had some wind tunnel data for broadcast of swine manure. And we're going from fractionals all the way up to, what is that, roughly 18%. But if we look at what's the total ammonia loss, we're going from very little all the way up to 62%. So huge differences. If we're using one number in our extension recommendations, we're off a lot of the time, a lot of the time. And so if I plug in 7.5% into the regression equation, I get an AL max of 25%. Okay. This is for broadcast, leave it on the ground. If it's with a honey wagon, if it's with a big gun, whatever it might be. What about money loss during, irrig during irrigation? The, the little presentation I did yesterday pretty went over the study we did and said, it does, we don't lose any more with it flying through the air. So we're just looking at the total after it hit the ground and we lost nothing as it flew through the air. So we, what do we do to look at the benefits of incorporations? One of the things Felipe did is, well, he had wind and tunnel data for this lagoon water. And he also had it for poultry litter applied on grass and things. And we figured out we can look at an exponential function with a rate constant, where the rate constant was particular to the manure type and even the solids content. The nice thing is you get in kind of the slurry band, you, can, you could use kind of a common K value. Okay, so it's a little complicated. And so we've worked it down to, again, some kind of factor that we could actually use. So I'm gonna do that for just the slurry because guess what folks, uh, it's a waste of time on, broad, on irrigating lagoon water. So we'll just do it for slurry. And so we've got some factors. Okay, if I incorporate it within four, six, eight or 12 hours, and I didn't go all the way to 24 because basically from an ammonia loss standpoint, it's over. Now, if I'm worried about odor, like down where I live, we'll say, okay, I'm still going to incorporate why if I can. Why? Because especially if it's a field that can get odor complaints or runoff issues, you know. So this is not the only reason we would incorporate. But if we're zeroing in on ammonia and, and reducing those losses, we got to get done pretty quick. So we came up with little application factors, you know, boil it all down. So if I got... This is what's my AL number for broadcast, multiply it by that. That's the AL that goes in the little AF equation. So for, for I'm looking at this, okay, broadcast on cut hay or green up for that matter. Broadcast no incorporation is the one. So, okay, whatever the maximum is, that's what I'm going to get. If I get incorporated with four, within four hours, it's 0.29, which means I've lost 71%. That means to my swine guys, if you want to meet our 20% loss goal, you got to get that stuff to in under four hours. And they're going, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's happening quick. That, that's why the rate stuff was, that's probably one of the newer pieces I've got in this. Um, and and we, we use a lot of the literature to get these different ones and then some of our own. Uh, six hours, I got, it's 0.4, I've, lost, I've reduced it by 60%. At eight hours, I'm 50-50. So we're going like after six hours from an ammonia standpoint, you're not doing a whole lot. After that, I'm incorporating for an, another reason. 
it may be odor, it may be runoff control. So we, what we do describe different application methods. Well, basically, it's a fairly simple thing to go to the literature and the studies. Okay, when we did this band spreading or this injection or whatever, then we could develop an application factor for that too. So the idea is take the literature and get it down to something that I could do with a calculator, knowing I'm trying to take the best information I got from the best research we've got our hands on. That, that's really the idea. And so, you know, I got all kinds of bands. I got some with a little bit of aerational, like they aerate the soil. They just make little, little holes. Um, my, my buddies up in Minnesota had a pretty good graphic in their extension pub where they had basically band with some disc to quickly cover it up. And obviously, uh, deep and shallow injection methods. So basically, you get down to it, these better methods are reducing the volatilization. The best basically get immediate incorporation built in one pass. So we look at, you know, if there's several studies on one of these, we average their results and came up with a factor that so we could just punch in the thing. Actually, we get these to the AF things. All I got to do is pull an AF out of the table and put it in the equation, and I, I got my estimate. So band spreading, we got to 50-50 real quick. And that's nice. Well, it's one pass. I'm not running a, another tractor behind with a harrow. Okay. If I got band spreading with shallow covering, there's a couple of ways of doing it. But guess what? It gets me down to 0 0.12. I reduce my ammonia emissions by 88%. That's actually a pretty good one. Shallow and deep injection, going deep. We've known this for years. You only get a little more. So it's not worth the horsepower. So most people are going to shallow. Well, you know, I'm at 90% reduction, you know. And when I was in Minnesota, we were doing this on every new facility. I go to South Carolina, I go, what's direct injection? So that, that was our extension. Let's do a direct injection field day. Show them the, show them the equipment. Now, what difference does it make? Part one is I'm going to take a couple of simple cases, compare it to what my house is recommending to but I think it's a better estimate of reality. The word is keywords estimate. Okay. And then after that, we're going to look at the slurry piece and look at the impact of ammonium in conserving methods, those different application methods. And we're going to think about the ammonia in loss per acre for a hundred pounds of plant available in applied. So if I put out 200 pounds in, we'll double it. Okay. So my target application is a hundred boils down to this. If I'm putting out lagoon water, and, and, and I use my, the, the Clemson estimates for ammonia loss, I'm overestimating by 1,133%. That's, that's important. 18 and a half to 1.5 pounds per acre per 100 pounds at PAN, which also means I'm, oh, when I go through the nutrient management, I'm over applying nitrogen by 21%. And if I could use these better estimates, I reduce my phosphorus application by 22 and my potash by 21. So you can obviously see immediately, we talk about precision things, we're going to have to get this a little bit more in line with the situation. For the slurry situation, it's a little better, but not much. I'm off by 133%. And if I, I'm over applying nitrogen by 17%, and if I use the new model, I could reduce my phosphorus reductions and still get my nitrogen by 17%. Now, if I look at the different methods, you see that incorporate with six hours, well, that's a big help. 65% reduction in the ammonia emissions per acre for 100 pounds of N, and an 11% reduction in phosphorus. All the way down, if I can do shallow injection, I can get to 93% reduction and a 17% reduction in my phosphorus to get the same nitrogen. Take home points, it makes a big difference. It's not only just impacting as planting PAN, it's how much I put out. It's gonna affect my phosphorus application rates. We have places where potash has to be managed. It's going to help me do a per, more precise vat, uh, uh, job at that. Neat thing about these band spreading methods, they get me the, some of the biggest impacts with the least horsepower and less time. And so that's we kind of like that kind of stuff. The next key thing is these numbers. If I up the content or TS content or lower the TS content on swine, they're different. Dairy is different totally. And poultry is totally different. So we can't generalize it. That's what we did in the past. We look at one study, we generalize for all species, <laughs> which is what we did. Uh -uh. We're way off on some of these other things. So the final thing is, does your state use estimates that are too simple? Mine does. And are changes needed? 
we are actively going, okay, we're, we've got labs that do calculations for us. We got, we're thinking about, and we're already talking about those growers. We, we need to update this. Life's got more complicated. We need to be more precise. We're worrying about all these things we talk about. This is a basic that we've got to get dialed in closer to reality. And oh, by the way, we need a lot more data on this. Getting good wind tunnels to get good data. We, we spent a lot of time on ours. It's not easy, but we need more data to do even a better job.